So what I want to talk to you about this afternoon is mathematics. Yeah, laughter. I'm a research mathematician, and perhaps you have some notion of what that entails. I work with mathematical entities that for many evoke feelings, feelings of confusion, discouragement, even dread. Why is this the case? Is this just the, the nature of the subject, this kind of confusion? Well, no. Mathematics is really unique. There's, there's really no subject that has such a disconnect in the way that it is taught versus the way that it is thought. When I'm teaching mathematics, typically I'm at a board, I'm covered with colored chalk, but when I'm thinking mathematics, everything is different. It's difficult to describe, but in my mind, at the best and most intense moments of mathematics research, I can fly through a platonic dreamscape of shapes and sheaves, weaving through a lucid fluid of forms and morphisms. The visual and the virtual merge, and mathematics moves and comes alive. But that private vision fades, and the public chalkboard remains a flat table of teaching and its typical attempts. So what are we going to do? What's to be done? Education reform is difficult. There's no one-shot solution to fixing problems. But let me offer this one idea, that we need to do a better job at illustrating and animating the mathematics that we want our students to learn. In short, what I'm calling for is more cartoons. Is that my big idea? Yes. Yes, it is. But why am I optimistic about that? I'm optimistic because of recent trends, the greatest of which is the bandwidth of visual communication. Think about it for a minute. Consider the evolution of video in our digital daily diet, evolving from TV and music videos to YouTube to social media. Video is dominating what we consume. Think about video games, which evolved from physical printed board origins into what is now the dominant mode of video entertainment. And don't forget about comic books. For more than half a century, superhero stories have been a, a niche and nerdy sort of entertainment that when you add modern computer graphics and animation, now is enjoyed by hundreds of millions of people around the world as movies. These trends are just beginning to influence the educational sphere. So what is happening with animated mathematics via video? Well, if we consider what is happening in online education, we do see evolution, albeit at a somewhat slower rate. Consider what's out there. MIT OpenCourseWare, Khan Academy, Udacity, Coursera, edX, they all offer mathematics content, but mostly with variants of a digital chalkboard. And though some new entries are really exciting, there is much more that needs to be done to illustrate and animate what we see in mathematics. Well, it's easy to say that a thing should be done. It's much harder to actually do it. So let me take a few moments and tell you about what I've done in illustrating and animating the subject of calculus. Five years ago, I built a course in single variable calculus for Penn through its partnership with Coursera. The videos available on a YouTube channel are all hand-drawn and animated. My goal was to make a, sort of a retro comic booky style in order to uh, draw in the student and provide uh, a user-friendly environment. My goal was to communicate in ways that cannot be captured in chalk. Every year I teach calculus to engineering students at the University of Pennsylvania, and for the past four years I've been experimenting with assigning these videos outside of class using a flipped classroom model that spends the time in class doing deep problem solving. The students have found that freeing, being able to slow me down or pause me, 
rewind me, and then speed me up again. And in turn, I've found it freeing in that I can add bonus material, stuff that I normally would not be able to do up at a chalkboard. Students can review it, and it can encourage the curious without discouraging the already satisfied. In turn, we found that these types of materials have been really inspiring for students both at Penn and around the world. Over 100,000 people have taken this course online. But still, there's much more to be done. At the moment, I'm working on a SQL course, a multivariable calculus course called Calculus Blue that's meant to be viewed on a cell phone. The aesthetic goals of this include using more design principles, engaging vibrant color spaces, and developing mathematics fonts that emphasize clarity, but also levity. These materials start off presenting multivariate functions by means of matrices, developing derivatives, generating integrals and applications, and ending with the grand theorems of field calculus. And though fundamental, this is an intimidating subject for a lot of students. And having a, a learner-friendly, soft, visual approach has been really helpful without sacrificing my ability to dig into details. Now, what really excites me about what has been built in this course is that in comparison to more traditional courses, I can dig into modern applications, robotics, machine learning, physics, the economic sciences, and the life sciences. For example, in developing vector and matrix algebra, I can work with functions that are higher dimensional in nature. This, then, is more well-suited to applications in machine learning and beyond. This makes it easy to define derivatives of functions using vectors for rates of change and matrices for derivatives. This course in particular contains as bonus material the implicit function theorem, something that is usually considered too difficult for first-year students. The way that I keep it grounded and approachable is by giving a solid application, in this case, to the accuracy of the GPS on your cell phone as a function of the accuracy of the clocks on the satellites that it's connected to. Students have found that really engaging. Likewise, when doing optimization theory, there's some really nice applications to Nash equilibria in simple two-player symmetric games. I found over the years that my students really get inspired by those kinds of real-world applications, especially to economic systems and optimization. Speaking of optimization, how many people remember Lagrange multipliers? This is, this is such a great subject, but I don't think I've ever seen a picture in a book that really expresses what a Lagrange multiplier looks like. Perhaps because that's the canonical paper-bound text, cannot accurately express what these are half so well as images in motion. Video kills the calculus book. When turning to integrals, applications to mass moments of inertia, solid body mechanics take center stage. They provide visceral applications of these integrals that lead naturally to thinking of probability density functions and applications to robotics, machine learning, and more. Finally, when approaching the grand theorems of vector calculus, Green's theorem, Gauss's theorem, Stokes' theorem. There's an emphasis not only the, on the mechanics behind the theorems, but on their applications, real applications, to fluid dynamics by means of Kelvin's theorem, to electromagnetics by means of Maxwell's equations, and to medical imaging analysis and more. When Considering those grand theorems of vector calculus, there's an emphasis on the unity of Green, Gauss, and Stokes as expressions of the fundamental theorem of integral calculus. That's a preview of some things that I'm working on under the heading of Calculus Blue to hopefully be followed by a more complete 
picture of calculus, but this is not the end. There is so much more to be done. All that I've talked about is a little bit of calculus. That's a great first step at attracting and inspiring our STEM students, but there's much more math out there. If I had to make up a, a wish list of mathematics courses to animate, I would put on there dynamical systems as the mathematics of complex systems that are evolving over time. Next, I would turn to linear and then homological algebra as the basis of computational science and the data sciences. Category theory would be a great bridge to higher mathematics as well as functional programming. And last, and most dear to my heart, algebraic topology with applications to topological data analysis and more. This subject, the heart of my research area, is especially ripe for illustration and animation. But there's so much more that can and should be done and will be done if we have the will to incarnate mathematical images that spark the visual imagination. This talk is a call for those with that vision to help draw a better future for students in STEM. Thank you very much.